Yo, what's up guys? Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit late, but 30k vs. Soundless is starting. Um, in fact, they are just drafting, so let me hop in. Uh, BUE first map, as it seems. Uh, let me see. So, 30k has first pick. They first picked Malf. Medif is still in. Varian Lucio bans. <laughs> That's actually very interesting. That's what they ban against us as well. And Utha, Sonya on the other side. Diva and May. It's a pretty thick front line. Do you ban Tracer here if you are soundless? The answer is yes. And if you are 30k, do you ban... So I think that's more interesting, I'm not sure what your ban would be. Could be a range carry, could be a side lane I think. Like whatever you feel like is the most annoying. And actually they are saying Genji and Farlander last week, that's true. Farlander was popping off on Genji. Interesting. Rexa and Liming. Alright. They have a lot of CC among Misha, Anub and Stukov. Chat we meet again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back, guys. It's gonna be a long evening as well. Like, first we played ourselves, now this best of five, and then we have two semi finals and the grand final coming up in the free agent tournament, CCL later on. Cassia and Taikis, last rotation of picks. Looks very solid, I'd say, the 30k draft here. Like, all around. They don't have the best race potential on the boss with. Neither the offlane nor the range carries. That's the only thing that's maybe missing, but... I mean, I talked about it yesterday with Benny as well, right? If... I, like, you can handle it. Uh, obviously, it's... Better if you don't have to, necessarily. And Sylvanas gets last picked here. And someone... Uh, dodges the lobby. <laughs> Ah, okay. Let's see what they, uh, what that is about. I assume it's because Masquerade was on the wrong account again. Like he is on Simplicity account instead of 30k account. Wait, let me open my dashboard as well. I can't see shit here. There we go. Uh, Hazu, hey. But yeah, we have a, a long evening of casts coming up. And I'm not sure, maybe... I think Benny joins us later. I'm not sure if he's gonna join us for the Masters Clash one. I, uh... I mean, for now I will just start by myself and see if anyone drops by. In case you missed it, we won 3-0 against Go Next earlier on. Obviously, you can check the VOD or on YouTube. I'll uh, always upload all the good stuff. Uh, yeah, the clean feed from Masters Clash seems to be Caldo every time now. Which I think is fine. Uh, boom. Here I am. We are still waiting, as you can see. Like, Caldo's clean feed worked uh, pretty well for me. Uh, so yeah, I don't mind it. At all. Yeah, the random sounds might be coming. Yeah, sure, I mean, <laughs> I have no control over that. Alright, looks like Masquerade is finally rejoining. Um... I think they will go into standard draft and just pick their heroes and go. 
There is a possibility that the lobby is bugged now. And when I say that, they would have to rehost the lobby. Like, there's a potential that Muscarade cannot join this lobby anymore. Wait, what kind of bullshit on other channels? What happened? Oh, Masquerade is in. Looks good. Okay, people are ready up. My Twitch chat is the best? Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, I... Thank you, but... <laughs> it's for sure. This channel is also a pretty Pepega chat for sure. Either way, we're loading into the game. BOE first map. Drafts have been uh, set. Wait. There you see the divas down there. And honestly, 30k versus Soundless, pretty um, pretty interesting best of five, no? Uh, Soundless beat Chili Mountain. So they they are poking, they are poking the teams in the top four. <coughs> and 30k definitely one of the teams in the top in the top four. And also uh, Ultralisk is back, so Zelia is not playing again. Was a one-time stand, and apparently, oh, we got into the lobby. I give it up for these teams. Good job, guys! Finally, <laughs> we got in. X-ray on Malfurion. I know he loves the hero at this point. He also first picked it. We see Beatles on Anubarak. Stukov with a passive on level 1. And Sylvanas debating. Ah, oh, not another pause! Come on, guys! What you doing? The Hardos versus go next. Lobby after lobby, game after game, no pauses, boom. And these guys are uh, legit AFK. Already 10 minutes in. I mean, if they have to pause, it's fine, right? <sighs> I'm actually, I'm an advocate, so if one of your teammates has an issue... <coughs> if, if one of your teammates has an issue, you should always pause. Always. So, I'm definitely with them here. Like, whatever is going on, they should sort it. Knowing knowing these uh, these teams, though, or knowing the 30k boys... They're probably memeing around, and uh, yeah, trolling instead of doing something. Yeah, I don't know, the diva looks a little bit buggy, but I think that's just the uh, UI, the talent. But I'm not sure, maybe he DC'd? Stay Quasar though, I don't think he DC's. Ah, oh, I give it up again. Wait, what is going on with Diva's UI here? We don't see uh, talent or anything. Well. Oh no, she's bucked in the other UI as well. Well, 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 well. They are pushing top lane though. They have Sylvanas, so keep in mind, every time there's a Sylvanas and actually an or Anubarak, in this case they have both, there's always a possibility of cheesing a tower on level 1. They lose, they lose a Misha for it. They got like half a tower, I think. If the opponents are not uh, aware, you always get one tower for free. Half a tower is still better than none. Cassia was poking bottom wall a little bit though. 
so yeah. And Battlefield early game is actually very a resident sleeper. It's very small things you can do to get a lead. And usually it's just you trade the easy camps, both teams will take the hard camp. It looks like the Russians, they don't want to trade, they want to fight this. I think they can't get rid of May on the point though. I think May on the point is uh, too big. And now because they didn't trade the camps, 30k got one for free. Like Savannah's could have been top to get the, the other easy camp. Numerak going in here, he's kinda deep, he's gonna get slapped as well. Takes a lot of damage, but works his way out. Oh! I see a diva talent. So now 30k is actually rotating to top as well. Diva started the camp. Tykes and May are coming. So is Sylph, Stukov and Anubarak. So it's gonna be a 4v3. Diva doesn't have Bombi quite yet, but almost. And they just sneak it away. And they, they steal it away. Two easy camps. That's one of the small things you can do. It's not gonna give you a big, very big lead, but it's a little bit of experience and potentially push onto the wall. I think Lina is rowing right now, guys. That's why there is no prediction going on. Uh, Bed of Barbs for Nubarak. Globes on Rex. Uh, physical armor for Stukov. Anything else? Looks very standard. Tykus and Cassia are already working on the... Sorry, yeah, Tykus is already working on the Immortal. It's very slow though, he... He's gonna work over time. Ka look at Cassia though. She got the whole wall on bottom and actually... De Quasa losing his... Mech here. Not being able to use his bomb. Looks like he gets out though. No, Anubarak! Hoi, 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 hoi! 30k! Getting farmed by the aggression of Soundless. Double kill. And yes, bot lane is a little bit of a problem because the hard camp is still alive. But uh, Sylph is working on it and they get the first 50%. And actually, Cassia gets stunned as well! Hoi, 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 hoi! Oh, okay. I think they are opening. <laughs> I think they are opening. Oh, my title is uh, my title is wrong. Uh, yeah, uh, that might that might be true. I'll fix it after the first map. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fix my title after the first map because if I do it now. We, we, we miss a couple of minutes of the game. Everyone relax, relax, relax. I'll fix it after... After BOE. Big damage again. Cassia made it behind the gate though. And actually Le Ming gets rooted and rooted by... Uh, Malf and uh, Mei in that case. They got the wall and a little bit of damage onto the fort. Experience is completely even. <coughs> hmm. Stukov has the level 7 uh, CDR if he only hits one guy with his W or procs the the W only on one guy. I think that's technically the, the strongest 7 you can go for. And I'm pretty sure Shamsik uh, is gonna 1v9. Misha, uh, Rexa's rotating, but 30k is already running away, they're aware of it. It's 
Huntless being greedy here, walking up to the fort, but meeting the boys. Neutralists just eat in, and so did Sylvanas. Both carries very aggressive. Masquerade has to use his D, but it's very hard to kill May. Nine and a half, actually. They is there a top wave that Rex I didn't catch yet? Maybe. It looks like they get ten when the objective spawns, <laughs> so they have a little bit of time to bully Soundless around. Uh, ball, lightning, trank, Odin, ice wall, and missiles. And they get the <coughs> they get the half time more or less because of level ten. are pushing out bottom and they will send their hard camp as well both teams did but soundless bot lane is a little bit in actually it's a big trouble honestly there's a wave and the hard camp coming and they are reacting now it's a little bit late but they this this half time is gone anyways like you you're not gonna hold on to the 100 hp the immortal. You see Tyke is cleared top already. Sylvanas is still occupied on bottom. It is a defensive spawn though for Soundless. I mean th they're all around already. Masquerade getting stunned by Misha and then the boss cleansed by Malfurion. Massive shove onto the bomb. Shamsik. Ice wall to Africa. Not hitting anything. Who did he cocoon there? I didn't see it exactly. Falander dies though. And whatever happened to the cocoon wasn't that good. Hydra's in trouble as well. Does he get out? Oh! I think he could have used his Misha stun there to live. Because Misha just respawned. And this is a commanding lead for 30k. They won the team fight very decisively. And therefore, a very big shield on the immortal as a reward plus they will kill bottom fort and top fort with the immortal imagine imagine they hit the ice wall imagine they hit the ice wall as well like they already won the fight super convincingly right they didn't need it this one this one they hit and I'm pretty sure Sylvanas lives. Cocoon was used to peel this time. Stukov is taking an aggressive rotation, but it actually baits the Cassia in. Hoi! Cassia goes down. Shamsik taking the aggressive way there and debating the opponents. It's still two forts lost. Like, don't get me wrong. This is, uh, in terms of map pressure, this is uh, terrible for Soundless, but getting the one kill makes... Wait, Ultralisk is dead, no? No, he's not. Uh, sorry, I was uh, surprised that Falander, he just manned up in a 2v1 and almost got the Tychus. If his team was slightly quicker on the rotation, they get the kill. Uh, he was on a mount, right? Once the Tychus is on a mount there, you it's very hard for you to secure the kill. Cassia got cocooned. Diva has a bomb though. Stukov lands the silence. The, 
the Diva Bomb. Again, Shamsik pushing it away. Having another W. Look at Muskrat. He might be in trouble. Can they get the silence? Yes. No CC though. So he walks out of it. And now the fight becomes awkward because Diva is back. Root. Icefall buys uh, time for Soundless to f follow up here, I think. Hoi, X-Ray! Ah, hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the I think the this, the route was enough if you want to go on Rexa, but uh, the icefall buys a little bit of time for them to set up. And Rexa actually level 13 uh, burning range. Not a big fan of the talent, but I guess. Dino getting farmed constantly. I mean, he is the highest MMR player, so you better farm him if you want to win this game. Aggressive spawn, so both teams deal as much damage as they can. It doesn't have to be like that. You can still rotate over to the other side to defend, but given that they both took the hard cam just before, they had no time to really react to the spawn anymore. So 30k is still ahead in XP, like round about half a level. The Russians could try to snipe bottom fort, and Sylvanas is actually marching onto it. It won't equalize the XP. Nice cleanse by Malfurion there. We only used uh, the boars. 30k didn't use anything. Misha though gets the stun. Okay. Shrank. Cocoon onto Tychus. I'm not sure about that one. His team is on the right side. The Anubarak finds another target though. Dino. One v What? What? Where did he go? Masquerade sets up a beautiful kill onto Stukov though. I think his D is on cooldown and he dies. Maybe it wasn't, but Sylvanas got the silence off. I have no idea what, what uh, Cassia was doing there on the right side. Anubarak though, I have to command Sir Ice Cream. Getting the cocoon on the left and Falander actually popping off as well. What is going on? I think Falander might be dead though. If Diva. Wait! Keg wait! Oh no! Okay. Falander popping off. So ice cream popping off. And honestly, there's probably more in the fight that I didn't even see, but I wanted to say. Anubarak realizing his cocoon is dog shit on the left side, but sniffing out the Cassia, hitting his E, isolating her 1v5. And Falander gives no fuck, he just. He just killed. Uh, he chased down two people. The Quasar thought he could bring him down. But I guess it's a level 16 HP uh, leech from Sylph that made a big difference there. He didn't need the unstoppable. And now, it is a rather small uh, immortal, don't get me wrong, but it is late game, right? We are well, mid to late game at this point. We are level 17. So they will march onto the keep. Uh, they're not. They're rotating as 5 to bottom. Okay. I mean, yeah. Masquerade wants to... No, he doesn't He doesn't want to fight this one. Tychus is still showing top. Dino, four deaths. GG, they farm me constantly. Cassia leaves the game. And they will get the second tower here on the wall as well. And keep towers, uh, one of the few ways to get uh, direct experience. So level 19 versus 18 coming up. 
So I wonder if they have enough time to stall the game for 20. Maybe. Probably not. It's hard on Battlefield. There is a very big wave on top though. You still have your hard camp which gives you a little bit of experience. But the hard camp is also a potential fight for 30k. Diva is diving onto bot... Uh, sorry, onto top. We heard Misha... Oh no! I think Diva's dead! No. Ah, oh, Malf though! Ah, hey, yeah, mine. 30k falling apart here, running it down on D.Va on top lane. Like, yes, Malf is the one that dies, but I think D.Va was the one sandbagging this fight. And then Malf's positioning, obviously, a problem. Now they get 20 for sure, right? They got a donation. The 20 is uh, imminent. And not only 20 and the donation, but the Immortal. I don't see them defending this. Root onto D.Va. She gets her bomb off. Ice Wall is big, but the bomb. Dino. Dino trying to get the kill onto uh, Nino Pie. 1 HP. I see them defending this. Hui! What? Okay, 30k. They're waking up. I still don't see them defending this, but... <laughs> they are buying time. They're gonna respawn the same time. Actually, I think Ultralisk had a beautiful grenade there, sniping, getting a, getting a kill. And I feel like whatever happened there was pretty uncoordinated by the Russians. For the first time, actually, every other team fight, I feel like they were very coordinated in terms of getting the kills. This one looked, and maybe maybe it, whatever happened to Li Ming, like losing the, the fight to Cassia, Maybe that was the problem for them. 15 seconds for Taik is 10 seconds for Krukenov, <laughs> Krukenov and Liming. Still no 20 though. Diva could get stunned here. Oh. Still no 20. No one was soaking uh, anything during this time. They didn't even, didn't even try to get any of the waves. Diva gets stunned. Uh, May juked the cocoon. Does it matter? Nice play by Masquerade. But the other frontliner dies regardless. How do you win a 19 versus 20 fight? By uh, the opponents being overconfident and wanking and not playing efficient anymore. I think that is probably the biggest chance you have. I would have to watch uh, in detail though what exactly happened. So the boss it's pretty healthy. Eva is still dead. And Rexa has the boars. Malf can cleanse them though. It is actually one of the few supports that has a way against it. And Malf getting rooted himself. No follow up though. Ice Wall was only on Anubarak. Speaking of Anubarak, he takes a lot of damage. He might just die here. The core is 70%. I think the boss is too healthy. So it doesn't matter who dies. The boss is still 15%. Yeah, 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 the chorus goes down. 30k actually losing the first map. And I told you this is going to be a good one. I told you Soundless is going to be ready to punish. And they did actually. Farming. Dino five times. They Quasa four times. I feel like they Quasa had a very shaky game here on D.Va. Ay, ay, ay. How did they open Anubarak Stukov, right? They saw the Malf, Anubarak Stukov. And then they got Rexa Li Ming. Wait, did they? Yeah, and Last Pick Sylvanas, I think. Huh. 
I think we are in for a nice best of five. Maybe 30k just wakes up and wins 3-1 now. But uh, you could definitely see Soundless is here to give a fight. And I'm telling you, Sir Ice Cream Anubarak, this man, he gets it every game. And then he pops off. Very nice start to the best of five. Wait, so uh, did anyone, did any one of the mods change the, the title? I see veins, masters, yeah, yeah, perfect, nice. Yeah, the boars level 20 are very, very, very strong. Waiting for the next map. Uh, Zelia played for 30k last week. Yes, he was a stand-in. Ultralisk couldn't play and Zelia was uh, subbing. Last week. Wait, what was the first prediction? What kind of gamble... What kind of gamble did you guys have? Uh, you wonder if the Russians could make it to the LAN in Paris. I mean, first of all, it's still we are still uh, living uh, during... during Covid, so I think traveling might be... Uh, a problem for everyone, not only the Russians. Maybe it's gonna be held online, right? We don't know yet. Um, but it would also be, like, for them traveling, even if there wasn't a pandemic, it would be the most challenging for them compared to the uh, Europeans. But let's talk about that when we are closer, right? It's still 10 more weeks before we head into the playoffs. Uh, looks like... Uh, looks like Infernal Shrines is the next map, guys. I like that one. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do you first pick Malf again? Do you first pick Sonya? Do you first pick Diva? Do you first pick Medivh? These are the options for 30k. And Malf, I'm, 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 I'm talking about Malf here because 30k or X-Ray specifically really likes the hero. I don't think it's necessary. The other heroes I mentioned are far more of a first pick worthy, I think. Sonya gets banned, by the way. Oh, that's the Anubarak ban. So Ice Cream, it's time for his Diablo. And Diva, so Medivh is in. The Russians are saying, we don't give a fuck. Pick it, Ultralisk. Pick your Medivh. And we will pick uh, Malfurion, and uh, I don't know what they have planned, but that is probably the opening if Medivh gets first pick. So now X-Ray might first pick Malf because Medivh is in, and he doesn't want to have the Medivh into it. And actually, Uther, I forgot about it, yes! Haha! No, <laughs> Oh, they had to. De they were debating this one, I think, for a long time. Because you saw them. We're waiting to the last second, and then they picked the Uther. I forgot about Uther. Yes, of course it was in. Hogger and Tychus. Pretty much insta lock. Medivh is awkward with Uther though. I don't think you pick it anymore as 30k here. Maybe. The wait is over. 
Victory above all. And they agree. They just draft into the normal double support. Cassia for Dino again and Stukov. So they need a side lane and then whatever they want actually. Because Utha could be played by Masquerade and then X-Ray would play the Stukov and Ultralisk could, I don't know, pick Kerrigan for example or Maiev. I think 30k might ban Mediv now, given how this shaped up. Other than that, what would you... Do you care about Chromie? Do you care about Anna? Okay, I think that's fair. Yeah, 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 that's alright. I think that is... Uh... Yeah, 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 Anna ban is fine. Wait, I got tagged in Discord. What's going on here? Ah. Just a random one. They got Kane and Rexa, so it's either Hogga or Rexa for man, depending on how they want to do it. Deckard Kane brings healing reduction on level 7 against the double support. And I think Sir Ice Cream is gonna last pick Diablo here. So Medivh will be untouched completely. No one picks or bans it. That's how it looks like. So, Lorex side lane, as I said, they needed a side lane, and then the other hero could be anything, and they chose to give Ultralisk his Maiev. So, Masquerade, Uther, and X Ray will play the Stukov. And so, Ice Cream needs a tank. Uh, I think the Ablo, maybe May, or. Yeah, I'm not sure. Wait, what? Ah! Hey! What, 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 what was that? <laughs> what happened here? Ah, they're typing they want Blaze. They, wa they want Blaze. <laughs> All right. I really, I think Blaze main tank is terrible. If that, like, wait, I need to see the draft again because now I'm confused. Also by what they are typing there. Um, So I don't, okay, just real quick. I don't know what the rules say, but locking the Anduin and then leaving the game, I think that's very borderline. Like if the rules, ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like if the rules have any uh, paragraph on that, they could probably enforce the Russians to play with Anduin last pick here, because this is, I mean, yeah. Like, not owning a hero, uh, my ass, right? Come on, guys. Then you have to do it, be like, then you have to fix it before, I feel like. I've, yeah. Because, it, if you let this go through, right? Just my opinion on this. We, we would, uh, then potentially in the future, we will see a lot of, like, the last picks where people disconnect and then they write, oh, it's this hero, it's this hero. Just to buy a little bit more time of thinking. Which is, I think, very annoying, honestly, but... I don't think the Russians had bad intention here, it just... It just, uh... It's very unfortunate. Like, in, in, uh, in CCL, this is not allowed, by the way. The admins made it very clear. And uh, Masquerade is saying the same as well right now. And he uh, and I fully agree with him. Uh, one second, by the way. All right, I'm back. Like 
to give you a little bit more uh, context here, right? So in scrims, like if people play scrims against each other, it's very, very often that lobbies are getting rehosted and remade because people pick a different hero and then they change it. Ah, they say, well, Cassia is Tychus or this, uh, the Zaratul ban is actually, I don't know, Rexa ban, you know? There's a lot of, like in scrims, I think it's absolutely fine. People changing and trying to get the best deal out of it. But uh, in tournament games, I think it's very much on the edge when this happens. And yeah, as I said, I don't think the Russians did it on purpose because they instantly wrote the hero as well. But it is a bit... Uh, uh, it's a little bit annoying, honestly. Well, either way, either way, now we are stuck uh, very long in this lobby because people are talking and, uh, you know, this is exactly... Uh, that's what I'm referring to. Looks like they have to remake the lobby because after buying the hero he wasn't able to lock it anymore. Uh, and I guess I put the webcam on again. Hello, nerds. It's not my Valera quick match, guys. I'm not doing anything. My hands are in the air. This is the... C it's a clean feed. Hands up, yeah. Come on, guys! Get into the lobby! Get your shit together, guys! Play! Ah! Oh. <laughs> What is happening here? There we go. The wait is over, the wait is over says Cassia. What is the score? A soundless leading 1-0. It's the best of five. And uh, quite entertaining map one, I'd say. Very back and forth. But soundless looked... They looked a lot more organized, actually, I would say. So it is Blaze main tank. Okay, let's focus. Let, let me let me try to cuz I I really dislike Blaze main tank by the way. I think it's dog shit, but we we see it from like we see it a couple of games, right? Here and there it pops up and uh it never really convinced me. But here we are again. They picked it into a very specific draft. They picked it into the double support with Mayev last pick. So maybe they believe the Blaze will... Uh, maybe the Blaze will bring them... Actually, I don't know. Wasn't Diablo just better if you want to be... Actually, maybe Diablo dies here what they have but blaze like blaze is also dying honestly if that's the case i'm not sure i don't know why the blaze was picked obviously bunker is good against uh like the end tomb for example or the mayev but I, I mean we talked about it yesterday quite a bit actually let me let me just see how it goes firelander on hogger with a w build Firelander last game on Sylvanas looked very, very confident, actually. Very confident. And honestly, he kind of uh, he outplayed his opponents. What's the score? It's 1-0 for Soundless. Five, four, three, 
So Blaze has the globs on level 1. I think that helps him a little bit. And I think it's also necessary. Like, you cannot play Blaze into this without the unstoppable on your D. Uh, you have to use it wisely, though. If you pop it at a bad timing, it's... Uh, you instantly gonna get farmed afterwards. Masquerade is gonna get stunned here. They can go for him. Question is, do they have enough damage? Big pull by Mayev. Again, Misha is the one to die first. Yeah, it's not easy to kill against the double support, obviously. Also, your only damage source is Tychus. If he gets blinded by Cassia, you, you deal negative damage. Um. Massive Mayev pull again. Ultralisk! Found his hero. Four, four men pull again. And they won the trade super hard. And they are playing for the easy camp, so this could be greedy. I'm not sure. Okay, they just get it. Blaze hits a massive stun, but they can't kill. Like, it's impossible for them to get the kills here, I think. With Rexa now, could be a different story. No, it's still, uh, it's the same. They just run away. And we saw that yesterday in the free agent tournament, the Uther draft being close to unkillable. We will see if it continues like that later on. Once they unlock a couple of talents. But then again, Uther gets cleansed on 7. Potentially Divine Shield on 10. Um, it's very rough to kill people. You might just have to play away from them. Like, don't fight into the 4-man. Try to open the map. Try to apply pressure on the other side. And, uh, I mean, it's Infernal Shrines after all, so the the objective, at least in mid-game, is very much a threat. So you kind of have to contest. I, on the minimap, I see uh, Uther and Leoric running into the hard camp. They both get out. <laughs> I don't know how close it was, but I guess they were fine. So the Russians have to make the decision now. Do they fight here or do they send someone to bottom? And it looks like they want to fight here. And I'm not sure if I like it. This is a good position for Hogger though. Did he? No, he messed it up. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hogger is going... Sorry, I was uh, I was looking at Cassia. Oh my god, the CC is, is beautiful here. Blaze into the Hogger. Blaze will die for this though. And uh, sorry, I, I was looking at Cassia who got rooted by, by Deckard in the E animation. So she couldn't pursue the, the Rexa. Uh, Hogger has full energy or what a rage, whatever it's called. So if he gets a good spin here... No, he's out of rhythm again! Shamsik has 1 HP, he gets killed. 35 to 33 skulls. Hogger kills Maya. 39 skulls, Hogger gets it! Farlander! Farlander, get... Dino! Uh oh, Dino gets the kill as well. I think he's gonna get out because Lorik is respawning. Yeah, they get zoned. And Falander securing the shrine, even though messing up his E a little bit. And experience is very even because both teams just five man brawled on the shrine. They lose the wall. And that's about it. Palander carrying it again. Uh, 
So ice cream, one HP. The next potion missed. So make that zero HP. And they are at this point half a level down, honestly. Fighting into the four man again. Blaze getting uh, killed. I feel like you don't want to take these brawls. Cassia knocking at the door. She has pretty good push uh, if she can hit the wall with Q's. Valkyrie onto Tychus. He gets stuck in the terrain. Level 10 though. Can't go in there. Mayev says she can go in. She takes massive damage from the fourth. Down to 50%. She does have double support though, right? So it won't matter. Yeah, the blind on Tychus is always there. So what do we have? Uh, Shockwave, Bunker, Sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty standard. We have Divine Shield. Sorry, Divine Shield is how it's called. And the cage instead of cocoon. Blaze went in. They should entomb him. I guess not. I guess you would trade entomb for bunker. It's probably good for you as the Lorek team. But uh, maybe. He's gonna find an Entomb on Drexler here when his team rotates in, and then it's much better, because then you actually get a kill. Looks like no one is really coming, though. They are both on the hard camps. And yeah, the Moonwell died on bottom. Rexa, speaking of him uh, before, he is kind of all over the place here. Mayev gets the kill. Big sleep by Deckard, but he's gonna get Entombed as well. And this looks... Uh, like a free one for the Russians. Uh, sorry, for 30k. And they didn't even cut the losses because they used three heroics as well. Still died with everyone. Or still died with the people they tried to save. The shrine is spawning in 10 seconds. So Deccans is back in 5, but level... I mean, they are level 13 as well, right? This is... Uh, it's looking really, really rough. The Uther double support once again. Seemingly unstoppable. Speaking of unstoppable, Blaze used his D here. They are fighting it. They used their Odin. And they know Divine Shield is on cooldown. Mayev takes a. Uh, what? That looks like Hans on Mayev! <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Valkyrie gets uh, cock blocked actually, and this is a problem. Problem because Divine Shield is not up. What? 30k, losing the fight here, I think. Dino going in. Okay, Dino getting a kill together with the Loric. What is happening on bot side? There's a Stukov following Hogger. Three more skulls. Ken Misha. Secure it. Hogger secure it, I think it. I think. And 30k managing to lose this fight. I feel like Mayev uh, kind of donated there. They had no D shield, so. Had to play it a little bit more careful. They are still a full level down, though. And this objective, once again, they barely scraped it together, right? They were bleeding out while winning the objective. No mana, no HP, no heroes. And this time, it's not even gonna scratch the wall. Didn't do anything. I mean, at least you didn't lose it. Because it would kill your fort 100%. Rexa <laughs> got rooted. They're trying to force Divine Shield. What? They're trying to force Divine Shield is what I wanted to say. Because you kind of need to grind out these cooldowns. Uh, soundless, that is. They need, to, they need to find opportunities where they get a cooldown trade that is uh, in favor. 
Uh, what did Stukov uh, skill? He skilled uh, CDR on level 4, I think. I think the talent is fine. Auto attack block looks... Okay, so we do resume. Divine shield was used. I think the CDR talent is not bad. I don't know if you need the block here. But I'm not a Stukov expert. Divine Shield was used, keep that in mind. So, if they catch someone now, they can actually kill. By the way, Hydra went uh, Burning Rage on Misha again. So it seems to be his talent of choice. Maybe he always did it and I just kinda forgot that he does. Hogga seems to be in trouble on bot lane. Maybe we will see it. And to missed, Valkyrie missed. Hogga is not in trouble. He just got two more ultimates out of there. The last remaining one is Mayev Cage. Stun? Okay. No one to follow up. Uther though. Masquerade. Doesn't have Divine, sh Divine Shield this time. Alt R was used two minutes ago or something. This time he dies. He's gonna have it when he comes back though. Level 60 versus 15, so Soundless will actually close the gap in experience. So Ice Cream looking very deep for a flank here. Cassia is still on the lane. They sniffed her out. Can they get the Cassia? She do dodges the first stun. Dodges the root. And tomb. Can't dodge the sleep. I mean, a hero actually, heroic effort by Dino. But, uh... <laughs> but he was obviously, like, in a terrible position when they showed up. Tychus can Odin the, the pull if he has to. They say a bunker is enough. And actually, honestly, they didn't need the bunker either, but they baited them in! It's this massive Alt R by Uther again! Instead of trying to save his Stukov or his Maiev, they seem to both get out. No, Stukov not that lucky. Or is he? Oh, he is! Oh, okay, he gets out. I'm not sure if they deserve to get out of there, but they did. And you know what? They have a fort up here, so they were able to use the Moonwell. And Soundless knows the Moonwell advantage is too much. So they're running away. Hoi yo yo, they could have escalated so hard. They get they get out though. Wait. They're walking up again, but this time there's already 20 skulls. I think. This is such an aggressive call. I don't like it at all. They also didn't seem to get any... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say they also didn't seem to get any good engage there. I didn't like that they tried it again. I think you kill mid for it if you are soundless here. Like, I think the disengage was okay. Because the Moonwell advantage is pretty... Uh, it's very hard. And I think you could have gotten mid for it, and then you... I mean, you give the objective, right? Because if you fight it, you might die. And you can just defend it at the keep wall. Hydra doesn't want to lose his fort, so they are fighting it off as much as they can. Cassia should be fine. She has double support here, even if she initially gets stunned. There is uh, a no imminent threat. Just sniffing out the boys and will pay with its life. 30k. Almost level 19. Man, it could have escalated so hard on top lane, I feel like. Uh, but you know, it's also the double support. Like, you have 
you, you get away with these things more often than not. Because you have a cleanse, you have a D-shield. Speaking of getting away with things, they're just running into the fort. Level 19 versus 18. Shamsik using his D on Deckard. Oh no, but Tychus. Massive Valkyrie, and this time... It nets them a kill. Shamsik. Still alive. Farlander can't go in again. Blaze is actually tanking an infinite amount here. Oh! Get out of my way. Yeah, Kaldor knows it as well. Get out of my way. <laughs> Stukov living because he was able to push away Misha. Because the cleanse was already used. And 30k brute forcing this fort. They get it. And they will get mid fort as well. Kaldo production value, hands up. Yeah. Level 20 Valkyrie, by the way. Lorik doesn't have silence and tomb. He went for the suck. Full suck build. Rex are dying after using his ice block there. Absolutely destroyed. No level 20. Farlander needs to get out of here. They don't want to fight here. Unless... Okay. <sighs> they don't want to fight here unless 30k runs it into the towers. So you have to de-shield for no reason. And then... They still die, so they give a big amount of experience to Soundless, who is gonna get 20 now. 15 seconds for Rexa. Divine Shield, 60 seconds CD. They use Sleep, though. Sleep is a very big uh, upgrade on 20, so the Sleep cooldown does make a difference for sure. And obviously Uther died but respawned, but now uh, if he dies again, he won't come back. Keep it in mind, Leoric doesn't have Silence and Tomb, so what the Blaze just did is fine. Uh, if he had Silence and Tomb, Blaze would be dead. And Dino, or Cassia, is working on the hard cam while the Shrine already spawned. Leoric is very tanky though, if he hits the Drain, which he did. They still have 20 boars, and this time Hogger has a very nice spin. Can they save Tychus? No! Oh no! Shamsik's ultimate got interrupted. He gets pushed out! Deckard Kane actually on the left side of the fight. Three seconds for his sleep. I believe the Valkyrie interrupted his sleep. Can he maybe look for a big one? No! He gets rooted. Okay. Well, they get the shrine, but the game is lost because I think 30k can end on top. Maybe. <laughs> the divine shield on Lyric. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Man, the Deckard sleep got interrupted. And then the second time he got rooted by X-Ray. So he couldn't even attempt it again. Also, Tychus was in big pain. Well, actually, honestly, pretty uh, dominant overall by 30k. They secured this one. Without too much trouble. Like, I think they were uh, inting a, a few uh, deaths that they, they didn't have to, but... I think their draft is very stable. And Dino topping the damage. Besides the death on top where he was uh, 1v5. He didn't die. Compared to the first map. So how did Blaze's main tank look like? I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that any other tank would have looked a lot better. Because there's a fucking Uther double support draft on the other side. But I'm not sold on the Blaze main tank at all. I don't Your know. Loyalty is noted. I'm not sure what... 
what it really brings you. I feel like his kit is so much better if he plays as a second uh, frontliner. Clowns Association, yeah. We will see a few Clown Associations tonight. Because I think there's two Clown teams left in the free agent tournament. Any chance this 30k team will play CCL under a different flag? I mean, Masquerade is playing for simplicity in CCL, first of all. And then uh, Ultralisk was playing for Sidestep King. Sidestep King's disbanded. X-Ray. Dayquaza and Dino were playing for Crowd Control. Crowd Control also disbanded. So we will see where they all end up if they get drafted again. I hope I got it right, but yeah, I think that's how it was for these boys. And it's 1-1 in this best of five. Map number three should come up very soon. Did the Haros win earlier? Yeah, we won 3-0 against Go Next. And okay, so to, to clarify that or to, to give you more insight. So the 30k CCL roster has nothing to do with the 30k Masters Clash roster. Uh, the 30k CCL one is currently uh, Liam, Hazelbobs, BBJ, Fury, and then number five and six are uh, getting picked up during the draft. And uh, yeah. Basically, two separate uh, two separate tournaments, and uh, 30k picking up Feel the Heat, and Feel the Heat is the team that you're seeing right now, the 30k guys. I hope that makes sense. And what happened to Washed Up? Well, Washed Up is no more. Washed Up uh, went different ways. Nick and I are playing together with the Hados, Benny, Chris, and Yasu. Uh, Banana is playing with Chili Mountain. And the other two, Masquerade and Daquaza, we uh, we are seeing them in 30k, right? Or feel the heat in that case. Whatever you wanna refer it to. Your loyalty is noted. Sounds pretty complicated. Yeah, it is a bit. I do agree. It is very. Uh, I mean, that's just Your how Hot Esports is at this is point, right? It's. It's a little bit uh, all over the place. We should be happy though that we have two big tournaments with Masters Clash and uh, CCL because we didn't have that before. We usually had like one bigger one and then a couple of smaller tournaments. Um, and. Uh, it's not only two big tournaments, but the, the system is very different for Masters Clash uh, than it is for CCL. Because CCL has a draft format, while Masters Clash, you just sign up with your team. So you can't have the same teams in both tournaments, because the, the it's, a f it's a very different system, basically. You cannot just... The Hados, the Hados would love to sign up for CCL and win it with ease, but we can't. <laughs> we cannot. You know, that's how it is. I actually, I don't know if he would win it with ease. The ping difference uh, lets us suffer for sure.
Yeah, actually, actually, there's no way Chris would play with us. We would have to get uh, someone else. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Uh, let's focus on the upcoming map. It's 1-1 one, one between 30k and Soundless. And Tomb of the Spider Queen. I'm hating my CCL team. No, no, no I don't. Otherwise, I wouldn't have stayed with them, right? <laughs> oh, no. The second they start, Shamsik left the lobby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like we have another... Technical uh, difficulty here. No, I I like uh, I like my boys in in, in the 30k roster. But I chose my Hardos as teammates, right, for the uh, for the tournaments here. Mops you has come online. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna stand in, guys. Actually, he speaks Russian. So he could... Uh, he could be easily a stand-in. Uh, not sure if that's ever gonna happen, though. Alright, alright, alright. Let's focus on this one. So it looks like both teams are 10 to... Ignore Medivh completely. Uh, not ignoring Malfurion anymore, though. As Hydra um, bans the hero. And this time Soundless has first pick, by the way. So this is the map from, from uh, 30k. And they ban Uther. They don't want to play against it. Anna gets... That's interesting, actually. So, Malf and Anna ban. Um, do they first pick Hogger again, by the way? They did it on Shr uh, Wait. No, they didn't first pick it. I'm lying. Because Uther was first pick. And then they answered with the Hogger. But uh, my point stands, actually. Do they get him? No, they first pick Lucio. Is that Yasu? It's Shamsik. And Shamsik is actually pretty good on Lucio as well. And uh, I think he always plays high five, by the way. So I'm I'm a little bit... I mean, I like the Lucio pick, right? Don't get me wrong. But there's two things about this. First of all, uh, 30k is not going to pick Lucio. And they didn't ban it. So you could always get Lucio in 2-3. And also, now... They kind of got uh, punished, right, in terms of draft opening. Like, Mediv Diablo can be a problem for the Lucio. And they pick Tychus and Junkrat. So you see double range carry picked here, which it's not too common, but they do it because of the, the opening, the Mediv Diablo. So they want... They want to have portal control with Junkrat. He provides that one. And I, I'm not sure about the Tychus pick, though. I'm not sure about the Tychus pick. Like, you don't really have threat on Diablo because of the Medivh. Like, Tychus doesn't have the threat anymore. Cassia gets banned. I think that's okay. Dino is very uh, confident on the hero. Likes to play it. The Malfael and Stuka. Malfael and Stuka. Do you pick Irel here? Maybe they just go Rexa again, right? Hydra really likes to play as Rexa. Do your 
It is Irel and Anubarak. Anubarak wasn't banned this time. So I I mentioned Irel because Irel has a she can she can interact with Medivh actually compared to the other offlaners. Um, and so Ice Cream back on Anubarak. It's uh, the tank of choice. I think actually every game for him, if he could get it, he would pick it. And it's fine. Anubarak is very strong. And Dino for the hard carry gets his Vala pick. We saw Vala um, popping up here and there the last few days. <laughs> you see if it's. Uh, We will see if it's the right pick here. I think they... I, I'm not sure what the better solution would have been. I think Vala is fine, actually, yeah. Maybe the Tychus pick is fine after all, because he's not that easy for them to kill if he goes spell shield on 13. Like, if you get ley lined. I mean, they have Stuk of Silence, like. Mm, we will see, we will see. There's a lot of weight on Junkrat here against the Medivh. I can, I can tell you that he can be the difference maker in this draft. Nubarak didn't lock yet, I'm not sure. Maybe he goes um, W on one? Or even globes? I'm not sure. No, he goes uh, the Beatles. Uh, it's actually interesting that Junkrat chose to go uh, uh, Nano Pi gets out, sorry. I wanted to say it's interesting that Junkrat goes this level 1 against the Medivh draft. Because, I mean, this level 1 is good and I like it as well, but I feel like against Medivh draft you always get um, the passive amplified damage from your uh, E and W. Because you're gonna go reset on level 4, you're gonna get W reset on level 4 against Medivhka. Either way, let's uh, let's see. We already th saw the threat. They almost killed the Tychus with a very uh, simple combo, right? So... <laughs> The rel suffers into the Malthayer, right? In the laning phase. So in that sense, the pick uh, the pick is not ideal, but the rel is gonna be good in team fights later on. Uh, it's 1 1, guys. It's the third map. Soundless 1, map number 1 on BOE. 30k 1 Infernal Shrines. And now we are. Essence acquired. On Beneficial. Two. 20 months in, still missing all my predictions. Junkrat gets slowed and not only slowed but also pulled back by the Lord of Terror. He also got fished out of the air while jumping away. And thank you very much for the resub. 20 times, still missing all my predictions. They're unlucky. One day you will high roll. Looks like they get... Uh, uh, Junkrat is whiffing his W's quite a bit. Uh, looks like they get, yeah, they got one tower and the other one is pretty low. The 
Diablo flanking again. It's hard to... Wait, the Rel is in mid. Okay. I think they went on Medivh there, but he portaled out. Because the Rel made the rotation. Oh, Diablo might be in trouble here. The the Junkrat finally connecting with his Ws. Ah, he still gets out though, right? Oh! Yeah, he got out. But the, we finally saw what Jun Junkrat is capable of. Was the first time he chained together some good CC. Also, Lucio and Anubarak, they both had... Actually, Lucio, he has one knockback against the portal, right? Which uh, came... came at the perfect timing but it wasn't enough to secure the kill we have a long pitch Stukov level 7 they're really trying to pay Junkrat is getting priority on top he really jumps to mid so she's gonna walk to top and try to pay there I r I'm not sure if I like that at all because bottom is a nuclear bomb, easy camp, and wave. And paying on top is also not that much easier, right? And we see it on the minimap. He really got zoned out. I really, I really dislike w the rotation right now. Like, I think that was... Cost them a lot, actually. Yeah, the bottom wall... Took quite a lot of damage. And I feel like... The odds of you sneaking to top and getting the pay are very small. I, I don't know, like pro maybe even non-existent. Uh, speaking of non-existence, it's impossible to kill when Medivh is around apparently. And they had good CC onto the Malthael again. But after all that fiesta, he still finds the portal out. Malthael got his gems in in all of this as well. Irel walking to top again. Vala knows though. This time Vala could be in trouble. No wait. Ha! <laughs> I guess she wasn't in trouble. Irel though. Irel was in trouble. And this is escalating. Soundless getting uh, completely pushed around. They lost a full bot wave at this point as well. Irel died, so no one, no one else was able to get it. They. Wait, what? Did they just pay in? I mean, they did, but they don't have level 10. So the 50 gems... The 50 gems are there to soak away for two. Yeah, Vala is not in trouble. Easy clap. Man, 10 is still half a level away. They got one wave on top. Midweaver is gone. They're rotating down to Marthail. I think that's the only reasonable way. But Dequaza should play it safe here. Because his Medivh is not quite here. Now Medivh is here. And that's when you can start to run it a little bit. Because you're unkillable. High five. Strafe, Apoc, yeah. Looks pretty standard overall. Soundless got bullied pretty hard. Like, the early game was very painful for them. Keep in mind, that was their payment, what we just saw. They paid 50 gems for that one. Junkrat is playing with fire here. He gets, <laughs> he gets the 20 gems in. <laughs> Actually, quite funny. Both teams took the hard camp. There's the easy camp again. Irel getting pushed in. She can knock the easy in. So this is not the biggest problem. Lucio missed his boob, so he has to run away. The Lord of Terror will kill him. If he finds him. Oi, oi, oi. The interaction there. Following the Anubarak. And this is... They're so split. What is happening here? 
Ah, yeah, high five my ass. Dies to the last rights. Both carries were wanking in mid while Lucio, Irel, Anubarak were like fighting on bottom. I have no idea. That's such a weird split. Apok! Hitting Anubarak, I guess. What? Okay. No follow up at all. Uh, that means if he ley lines now, they don't have Apok. Speaking of uh, ley line, Le Le Medivh gets pushed in deep here. Not only pushed in deep, but he dies. His ley line got interrupted in the process, and that was a nice kill. They get his stacks as well. They lose one fort. Make that. No. It's gonna be one for it after all of this. And Diablo is still fighting here. He doesn't have Apoc. Vala gets CC'd as well. The boop misses though. I think she's gonna be able to walk out. Can they kill Anubarak? Yes. And that's the redeeming kill. Even without Medivh, they won the 4v4, which is very important for 30k. Maintaining their lead here. No tank means it's close to impossible to contest the boss. Why? Because you can't walk into the bushes. Uh, you could if Irel was closer, but she was showing on bottom. Also, she just uh, decided to pay. And uh, I mean, the game is. It's a bit odd, right? Because 30k is kind of winning everything, but they don't get the payments in yet. This is another payment by Soundless, which might be another 55 gems for two minion waves. Maybe they get something done on bottom. Irel is coming. No. Mithrael just moves out before anyone is nearby. Top Weaver, sure. Bottom Weaver is what they choose to push with. Leyline, one, two, big Apok as well! Ooh, Irel used her ult. I think that was a little bit prematurely. Tychus is gonna go down for sure here. Ah, uh, and it really falls apart. Soundless. Can't find any answer to this. Actually, the top weaver got a little bit more than I expected. Vala is there to de-push it, and actually 30k is going in here. Irel doesn't have the ult, keep that in mind. Malthael is very deep, gets protected. Sound, ah, oh, the rip tire. Oh no, and yeah, keep in mind Irel doesn't have her ult. Because I think it was pretty wasted what happened there, the way she used her ult. And now, dying to last rides for free. Dequaza getting stack after stack three already. Level 16 versus 14. And you know what? They have banked up 100 gems. 30k have... Talent advantage. And they're gonna have two camps plus the Weaver coming up. The only thing they are missing is the boss. Because they took it earlier. Yeah. Perfectly orchestrated as well. They set up both camps, get the payment. 16 versus 15. 17, actually. And, uh, I mean, this is, uh, lights out, kind of. You really need to find something as soundless, but I, I don't know. I feel like it's quite the opposite at this point. Portal on to bottom, to Irel. Ley line, one, two, heroes. Lucio's out. He's gonna be able to unstoppable. Yes, he gets the unstoppable of both. As long as Lucio is not in the ley line, he can high-five the boys that are and therefore make the combo useless. Junkrat not connecting his W. Uh, well, I use Strafe, but I guess just to zone them off a little bit. She does have spell power on 16. Uh, 
And yeah, first keep is down. Boss should be uh, in like a minute or something. The game is not quite over, because if 30k dies somehow, which I think is very unlikely, uh, Soundless can bounce back. Oh, Junkrat just whiffed his own W. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, things are... They're trying to force a fight, yeah. Voila, I got booped in. This is kind of what we need. The ley line, though. Once again, Lucio's not in. He's gonna... Yeah, there we see the unstoppables. Just the high five. Has use against the uh, ley line upper combo. And actually, Vala getting booped in uh, initially for the fight was very good, but they still can't... Can't get anything. Last rights is not enough. So Ice Cream, did he get massive shoved? I think he did. Did the massive shove save him? I'm actually not sure. Either way, I mean, they're closing in on level 20. Masquerade looking for another pick. They're a little bit all over the place. They're diving core while Medivh is also taking bottom keep. I'm not sure. I think they... I think they want to core. Maybe they just want maximum experience. Top keep is also gone. Ley line was used. Anubarak takes a lot of damage, goes down. Another stun by Masquerade. And uh, oh. saving his KDA, the last rides couldn't connect because of the fountain. Yeah, yeah, it all doesn't matter, right? Uh, this is uh So the Uther draft and the Medivh draft, both of them very straightforward for 30k. I feel like the Lucio pick in 1 2 or uh, the first pick actually if Medivh is in is not correct. But yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not 100% sure how they uh, should have opened this up. They had no tools though. They only had Junkrat. And uh, I actually, I mean, sure, I, Lucio knocked back and Irel knocked back, but it, it felt, I think it must have, must have been terrible for them. Like this game for sure felt terrible. A 30k is leading 2-1. They won with the Uther double support draft and they just won with the Mediv. And both of these games, the, the ones they won, pretty straightforward actually. No, no big issues. Map number one was quite back and forth and soundless. Uh, just coordinated later, uh, later team fights very well, I think. But yeah. The midi actually it was just very oppressive here, like Your loyalty is noted. Couldn't really do much. Vala was untouched as well, right? Tyke's pick, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not certain. Uh, if but I feel I feel like first picking Malf is also a bit strange, but if Medivh is in, there is there is reason that if you don't want to first pick Medivh, then maybe if you want to support, Malf is the choice. So you have a route at least against the portal. Maybe you just ban the Medivh. To uh, not have any of these issues, right? Just ban these heroes forehead. Or pick them. Pick them yourself. 
Your loyalty is noted. Is it best of five? Yes. Do I have a master slash command? I think so. Click on the uh, click on the link. Wow, Mubot even reacted twice. Pock. Um, yeah, 30k after the first map looks... Uh, they didn't really look shaky, right? Map 2 and 3, they got their drafts together. And... Uh, they definitely woke up, I'd say. They banned Malf and Anna, right? Yeah, I I think that's very... Like, it makes it even more weird now when I think about it. Like, you ban Shitfurion, but then Mediv... Like, you have to... Yeah, I, whatever. And I, I said, right? I said it as well. Uh, 30k, or X-Ray in that case, is not known to pick uh, Lucio himself that high prior. But, uh, I mean, whatever, right? They, uh, you cannot refund the draft, so you have to play with it. And actually, you know what? The map, the map choice. Ugh! Brexit holdout. I think uh, X-Ray picked that map. I think 30k is the one that picks this map. Yeah. Hydra has the first bun and the first pick. All right. What? They banned their own uh, Anubarak? All right, uh, Rexa, Genji. Who else? What else would you first pick? I mean, you don't. I don't think you first pick Genji, which makes it makes it a bit odd because I feel like in one two the opponent's gonna pick it if they draft for Braxis. But uh, yeah. So I think this is, by the way, this is how Braxis draft should look like. I think this is the right response from 30k. Uh, I feel like the 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 Deathwing ban is is. Uh, is wrong. I, I don't know about the Anubarak ban. Maybe maybe it's fine, but I think you get the Genji in one two if you see the Rexa opening like that. It's good on the map and helps. It helps a ton. And I guess we are back to ignoring Medivh. Didn't we pick Braxis versus Gen G? Yeah, we did. Because uh, we did practice the map back then. And we had the read that Gen G didn't practice any Braxis. So we picked it uh, in the BlizzCon semi final, yeah. And honestly, the game was, was fine until it wasn't anymore. <laughs> like, we. That's a different story, right? But yeah. Feel free to to check that one out if you want to. All right, you need a tank, you need a support, and then the last pick could be anything. The last pick is Junkrat, so they will flex the support, and it might be Brightwing actually. I think. By the way, uh, Soundless picked Monk in the first three. I guess that's uh, noteworthy. It's, uh, I feel like, it's it's okay. It's 
It's a very aggressive pick and certainly on maps with a lot of rotations, Monk gets extra value. Turael and Cassia. Oh, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about the Turael. I am not sure about the Turael, but we will see. It doesn't synergize with the monk at all. That's that's my issue here. Like you you wanna get seven sided value and ideally you get a stun for it. I mean maybe they go judgment, sure. But then Actually maybe that's the plan, I don't know. <laughs> you'll see. Do do you like it, Benny? I mean I I trust your judgment on it. <laughs> Get Benny on voice? Benny said he's busy during this, but now he's uh, trolling in chat, so I'm not sure. You wanna join? Alright, let me call you. Uh, let me call you. And then you can uh, enlighten me. Okay, great. Uh. Yo. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, did you did you watch any of the best of five or? Oh, I, I just settled in at work, so. Okay. I to watch. I, I saw the last part of the previous game. But, yeah. Uh, like not anything besides. Thirty K scammed them with a the Uther draft and a Mediv draft. Yeah, I heard you say that, and I'm not sure. I mean. I think the Russians, they, they're they not the best into those kind of drafts, right? Like, they want to play aggressive, and those drafts kind of shut them down a bit. Yeah. Uh, but this kind of map, like, th this draft on this map, I think suits them very well. And uh, regarding the Tyrell, like as I mentioned, I think they're pretty good together, not gonna lie. And with Holy Ground, even 7 sided is fine with it. That's and true, yeah, yeah. Holy, yeah, Holy Ground gives you, yeah, that's true. But uh, I don't think you necessarily need to have like uh, a stun for it, like to set set it up. I don't think it's super necessary. Like this game, you have the Rex right and Maev. Like if he gets a pull on one guy that split, you stop seven siding in a range, and then he gets like pulled back in. Like he can't really dodge it. Yeah, just true. from a Maev W. Actually, I think there was also maybe no real good choice. Like they banned Anubarak and Muradin got picked away. So I'm not even sure which tank I would have uh... preferred here, but. Yeah, with the draft, I think the Tyrion makes the most sense, almost. Like, uh, I mean, for the map, I think May is quite good. Yeah. Um, Varian is decent, but versus this kind of aggressive draft that 30k had, I would probably not go Varian either, but May, May for sure would be an option. Or I'd actually have a phone call group. But... Yo. I think maybe Varian was even banned, right? 30k, I mean, maybe they banned it in their games before, I believe, but... Either way... Misha is gonna die here. He gives Muradin some stacks. Uh, both teams did both camps, by the way. I know in Storm League no one does anything on this map but brawling 4v4 on bottom. Um, but that's actually the worst you can. That's actually the worst you can do. Sonya is gonna get pulled here. Not sure. Ah, uh, I think she lives. <sighs> she didn't get pulled either. Kenji though, oi yo 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 yo! Donating into the turrets. I mean, he was going for a big deflect, but uh, yeah, got punished instead. And actually, Soundless is gonna get a few percentages here because of it. Not much, and it's not gonna matter. Ten percent. Yeah. It, I'm Hello. like, I heard your. Oh, yo, yo! Yeah, Genji, Genji, run it into the towers. He donated oh. his life. It's a 
uh, oh, it's Ultra. It's Ultra. Not, he wanted a big uh, deflect play, I think, but he got stunned and then he just <laughs> he died. Yeah, yeah. So far, the talents are pretty normal on our all heroes, it looks like. Yeah. Monk would maybe go block, but maybe the heal is better versus this draft. Not sure. Actually, block Sonya and the Stu. Like, it sucks against Genji, but against the other heroes, I feel like it could be really good. I mean, even versus Genji, it's not bad. Yeah. Because it's not like stacks. It's yeah, like that's permanently true. Blocked. That's true. But maybe it dies quite easily. Not sure. Yeah. Uh, when Genji hits the, the block for them, I guess. Both camps, I mean, both teams have been like kind of equally fast on camps. So yeah, 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 they both took it uh, instantly. Genji's oh, gonna get a reset here, I think. Ooh, yeah, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Didn't get the reset. Yeah. Oh, 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 the junk red boob. Oh, no. Well. Yeah, and and Mai have died top to Sonya. Wait, apparently, Sonya 2v1. Sonya 2v1. <laughs> she does die, though, but she, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's how she got to <laughs> Yeah, she got. Although, I mean, at this point it's just XP kind of. They lose a bit of bot wall, but they're not losing that much percentage. And the other, uh, like the Maya Cassie are respawning already. But uh, maybe, maybe the blue team can hold off and get the full Actually, wave from it. What about the Muradin build? I just is that? Mm. It's the. I think it's like the build you play. Now all mode, like 7, you can take the other damage talent. Yeah. But uh, the double clap with the heal on 13, I think it's probably the best Muradin build okay. now again. All right. After they nerfed the other talents. Okay, fair enough. No, I, I think Skullcracker is fine against Turail. You might high roll his yeah. tank if, or I mean, we don't know if he goes Judgment or not, but... Yeah, I mean, Skullcracker is always fine. It's a bit less damage, but uh, like the mini stun can always interrupt things if you're lucky. Yeah. The, the part I don't like about it is that you have to do like three attacks on the same guy, which a lot of the time you might not want to do, and then, then you, your talent does nothing, right? Like, say so you do two autos and then you run away, you have to run. Yeah. Then instead of having two stronger autos, you uh, do nothing, which that's, is a bit that's true. But it does uh, make your stun a bit easier to hit if you can free attack. By just timing it off to the third auto. Not too much going on right now, though. It's hard to gank the Rexar. I don't think he's died yet, right? No. And same goes for the young crit, I suppose. Yeah. Also very hard They're invading to get the hard camp, though. I feel like can't, because if Junkrat rotates, you will. You just can't be on the point anymore. Yeah, I, I think they could if they came when the camp was almost done. But yeah, okay. If they yeah. arrive like this, it's yeah. a bit. Because now it's just a fight in enemy territory, which shouldn't fail. I have you. got a big pull but, on Stukov oh though. My and God, actually she did so much damage, what happened there? Yeah, I don't know actually. <laughs> <That> <laughs> it was like Stukov just exploded. Maybe his uh, level 1 talent damaged himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was Misha stun as well. I'm not sure. He took a lot of damage though from the... Yeah. I have Genji jumps oh. in. Takes the yeah, beating. It Actually, almost going down. Here. And Sonya's on the hard camp and again. Ooh, like this is now uh, they should actually take yeah. the camp, but they're not going for it. I think they should have gotten the camp now. Now it's too it late though. Low. Right? Yeah. Now, no. now it's too late. And they need to get to bot. Junkrat is going core. Yeah. Oh, it's a yeah. Th this level ten advantage paired with the hard camp they kept now probably should give them the full surge wave, unless a miracle happens. I mean. Rexa's gonna, Misha gonna walk up and Junkrat is not there, so he's gonna equalize yeah, it for a moment. Yeah, they're holding, they're holding. He needs and to be careful though, far yeah. from them. And I mean, we saw how Stuko popped before, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, they don't even need, uh, it doesn't matter if they're ults or not, if they just hit him like that. Mm, the Sanct will help for those kind of initiate, uh, yeah, dives kind of, but... Maybe they actually go Yachin. Genji started boss, by the way, but... Okay, he... Yeah. He just wanted to lose some HP. They still wanna do it. Okay, no, not anymore. It is Judgment, Ooh, actually. The... Yeah, the, the Stuko oh! should've been dead there. Oh, no. Oh, it's in Africa. <laughs> and he extracted, yes. actually. I mean... Riptire was used as well, though. Yeah. Oh, what's happening? 
Oh, there's probably a deterrent. Not getting out there. He's gonna get uh, double um, trade value though, so he respawns in 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no one is run even. It down with the wave again. Ah, this is so. Like, look at the top as well. Sonya is like knocking at the door. No one is. Oh, Cassia. I think you're going stun? next. It's a stun silence. Wonk jumps in through the heal. Actually out. Yeah. And meanwhile. Harlander goes but... next door. Oh, it's Harlander. <gasps> what? Oh, and the shield. Oh, okay. no one goes next, oh, apparently. Man, so. <laughs> Everyone lives. Yeah, no Genyu was here. And Sonya got the whole board, though. They're so far behind. Yeah. Them. Or like At this half point, the right They will probably rotate and finish it. I mean, it's very awkward for the Rexter once you lost the fourth, right? Yes. You can't really... Yes. Especially versus Genyu. Yes. It's terrible, actually. Oh. Unfortunately, the Misha leash range isn't from keep to the camp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you need a you need a safe point at least somewhere. Yeah. Uh, what's the play for the red team now? I mean, they have to do something, right? But at the same time, invading into like, I mean, they have a decent draft for invading, I think. Yeah. But the positional advantage for the blue team will be very big, and it. But honestly, it matter. Only thing that matters is if they can connect to the like. Stuko or the young crowd or something, I think. Yes, I think, yeah. Because the others are probably too hard to kill, unless they find a split pick with the 7 sider. Yeah, but 30k is grouping as 5 at this point, right? They are walking yeah, together. Because yeah. I think they want to pressure. Yeah, they're gonna pressure the camp. And they don't have to risk anything either at this point. Like, even if they don't soak one wave of XP, they will almost get as much XP from the extra passive XP they have. Uh, from having two forts versus no forts. Yeah. Mm. Cassia is stuck on bottom, and I feel like and it the, get, gets worse and worse, and worse in terms of positioning. Seems like they're doing the boss. Uh, it on it? I think this could be good for the red team. Wait, Stukov walked oh, in. Look of it on it. What? Eh? Uh, okay. Okay, two okay. explosion really? might be massive. Can yeah, they? the Mayim is putting a lot of damage out too. They can't win it though, but right? But the Murad in it too. Yeah, yeah what is this? They, they killed the Genji oh, as well. Actually, on the W heal. I mean... Wait, Junkrat has no W! Hello! Oh! oh, okay. oh, oh they oh, reacted so out. slowly and now Monk is dead actually. Uh, <laughs> <I think not. laughs> uh, um, XP-wise, it was <laughs> a fine trade for the red team, but uh, it probably could have gone better as well. Yeah. I think the, it was one one of the biggest things that went wrong there was that uh, they disked the Stukov that wasn't like the one they wanted to kill. If yes. they disked anyone else and killed Stukov, they yes. probably would have won the fight very easily. But uh, I guess he, uh, the reason he walked on the point was that he wanted to slap <laughs> to slap away them away. The yeah. But <laughs> it looked very ambitious, very suicidal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, actually, yeah, I don't think he should do that. That's too cough. Yeah, I mean, a Junkrat W is enough. And yeah, then he can, yeah, yeah, yeah. He exactly. can use it after the red team uses their, like, engage. Uh, yes, effort. exactly. But, I mean, even talents now. They use Riptire, yeah? yeah? That's interesting. Judge oh, no, really Genji trolling again, or baiting. Yeah. Oh, wait, Hydra. Yeah, 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 I think Sonya. Sonya. Yeah, Sonya met him. Maybe? Yeah. Mm. Okay. 30k actually looking very seems, dominant. Yeah, seems like this will be a. Oh, but that's some decent damage, but sadly they don't have enough damage to finish him. Holy ground coming out, but not doing anything this time. Yeah, I'm trying to see a way for red team to come back, but at this point, it's just they have to play better than the enemy team in a fight. I think the boss fight <laughs> was like a way to come back, because it was kind of yeah. close, but it needed to be like 10% better than what they actually yeah. got. Because yep, yep. now, full Zerg wave, bottom is pushed in. X-Ray, oh, actually... X-Ray is going down again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it sounds so surprised, but... <laughs> I don't think it matters too much though. Maybe uh, they can't they core because of it. Yeah, true, true. They had the core potential. I mean, maybe they... Seven-sided is up. Bomb? Oh, it was quite late. But Sonya might die anyway. It's very yeah, chaotic like at this point. Shamzik is running out. 
Oh, but the wheel missed actually. Yeah. Maybe he had to. Oh, with the Ultra is getting the reset. <laughs> Just jumping around. We're already jumping as well. Everyone's jumping. Oh no. Okay, they get uh, the boys in the fountain. I mean, the Zerg wave is still so huge. Dino's just jumping around this world. Yeah, and the Zerg wave, just the core. I guess there was no way to uh, not end with I mean, this. perfectly timed as well, though. The free agent tournament starts in two minutes. Yes, so. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, 30k. They didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't want to ruin our casting. So. Oh, I mean, there was a lot of delays on the first maps as well, because they, you know, they had to redraft, or not redraft, but... Uh, so Ice Cream didn't own the hero, and then they timed out at the uh, end and brought its uh, its blaze or something, you know. And then there was like a discussion. Um, but yeah, oh, they won. <laughs> they won three one. Southless, I mean, yeah, they're not quite there yet. I think map not map two and three, yet. the drafts. I feel like letting the Uther through, letting the Medivh through, and then not having like a good answer to it is uh, problematic. I think you just mm. ban these heroes if you don't have a good plan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like the Soundless team and both the Russian teams kind of like if, if they get their heroes versus an equally skilled team that and they're co like they get to play what they're comfortable with, they can win against those teams for sure. Like they showed that versus Chili Mountain. Yeah. And I don't think anyone expected Chili Mountain to lose, even though maybe it would be clo like close. I don't think people expected them to lose. Um, hard to say if it was an off day or anything, but I mean, Soundless has done pretty decent against all the top teams. Yeah, they are I don't remember our game into them, but... No, we, <laughs> we had our first week, very but... first week, I think, against them. Yeah. We but... dodged the bullets by winning against them early. Yeah, I guess, we I know. guess. Week 7 Soundless might have been a monster. <laughs> Week 14 soundless. <laughs> oh no, yeah. It's happening. It's, uh... The later half, the Russian dominance will happen. Yeah, why they disband? I think uh, that's, the, that's the two options for <laughs> 50, the Russian 50. teams. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, actually, you're right, because uh, perfect timing, kind of, because we're going to swap over yeah. the free agent tournament. It seems like the first game is the heavy impact team, the one with 